What's going on guys? Welcome to the 48th Xamarin Android tutorial. So in this video, what we're going to be doing is taking a look at creating a left and a right drawer layout using the new action bar drawer toggle in the support library seven. Okay. So in tutorial 27 of this series, I showed you how to do something similar to this. However, the, the action bar drawer toggle in the support library four, which was being used in that video is now deprecated. Okay. So we, Android wants you to now use the new action bar drawer toggle using also the new toolbar. Okay. So this gives us that cool animation effect from the hamburger to the arrow, to the arrow, to the hamburger. And then of course we can still implement the right drawer layout as well. So the, the toolbar is heavily used inside of this application. So if you aren't familiar with it, take a look back in the last three videos, which I cover toolbars and kind of the components and how to work with them and just getting comfortable with them. Cause we are going to be using them heavily inside of this application as it is needed to use the action bar door toggle in the new support library. All right guys. So this video is going to concentrate on creating the left door layout and getting this effect that we have right here that you see. So I'm going to do it in Xamarin studio since that's what I, the ID that I did it in inside uh, the last video, this is the up, the, whose uh, video this is now the update for. So this is a blank application and I've named it drawer layout V7 tutorial and I haven't done with anything with it, okay? So the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna start by creating our theme, okay? So the theme is something that's gonna be required for the toolbar to be able to use, okay? And we did this in the last few videos. So if you have seen those, um, this is pretty, pretty much gonna be the same thing. All right, so we're gonna create a styles XML. And this is where we're gonna actually create our theme. So we'll do resources, it's gonna be lower case actually. And then we're gonna create our style here, which is actually gonna be our theme. And we'll call it my theme. And we're going to inherit from the theme app compat light no action bar. And this is the easiest way to get the dual, the toolbar working because if you don't, if you if you have an action bar and you try to set the the toolbar as the action bar, you're going to get a runtime error because it, you're basically saying, hey, I want to set the toolbar as the action bar. Then Andrew's going to say, no, you can't do that because there's already an action bar. So what we're doing right here is saying, okay, no action bar. We're going to set our own action bar, which is going to be the toolbar. And this color is going to be the primary color of the, of the theme, which we're going to set the background of the action bar to this too. So this is kind of like a nice little blue. And then next we're going to set the drawer arrow style. This is going to be the actual arrow that you guys saw when you opened and closed the or when you open the, the drawer, okay? And we're actually gonna have to specify our own style for this. So we'll do at style, we'll do my drawer arrow style. So that's pretty much it for this theme, okay? And then now we're gonna create the, the style, which is my drawer arrow style. And we're gonna inherit from a framework widget called app compat dot drawer arrow toggle. And then we're going to override just a few attributes in here, which are just going to be the color for the first one. So this is actually the, the color of the, of the hamburger icon and the arrow, of course. So uh, this is going to be probably like a little bit darker than a pure white. So we'll do F5, F5, F5. And then the second attribute that we're going to override in this is going to be the spin bars, okay? So we actually wanted to animate from hamburger to arrow and from arrow to hamburger icon. And we'll set that to true. Alrighty, so that is gonna be pretty much it for our style. And let's go ahead and close that, save it. And right away, let's go ahead and set this, that theme for this activity, okay? So the activity, the theme for this activity will be our my theme that we just created. And Android will take care of the rest of that for us. Or sh I should say Xamarin will take care of the rest of that for us, putting that into the to the manifest. 
and let's get rid of some of this template code. And the next thing we're going to want to do, guys, is we're going to want to actually get the the files for the support library so that we can actually use them. Okay, the app compad. Okay, so we run this right now. Probably wouldn't be so good because we're using app compad and all the support stuff. So let's go ahead and get that now. And you can do that in two ways. You can actually right click and get get more components, or uh, sometimes that gives me a little trouble. And what I like to do if it does is actually just reference the straight DLL files of the support libraries. And the way you can do that is you first need to download them, which you can do here, the component store. And similarly, as you do inside of Xamarin or Visual Studio, you can just hit support and then uh, search for that. And then app compat's the one that you want. Download it, extract the DLLs, and then reference them inside of here, which I'll do now. So I'll do edit references. I already have them downloaded. So it's going to be that download will give you two, four, and seven, since four is a prereq of seven and then just reference those reference those directly so that'll give you that'll give you the support libraries all right so now that we have that we're good on that what we can do now is actually create our drawer layout and our toolbar because they're all going to be in the same file so what we're going to do guys is we're going to come into our source and we're going to delete this button and we're going to create our toolbar first okay so we're going to do android dot widget or I'm sorry dot support v7 dot widget dot toolbar and then inside of here we're actually going to give it an ID so that we can reference it inside of the code so we'll do at plus ID eh, and we'll do we'll just call it toolbar next we want to give it a width and the width is actually going to be match parent. So we want to fill the entire screen. And then of course, let's give it a height, which we'll just do wrap content. And then let's do it a min height. So we want to be the height to be at least the size of an action bar. Okay. So we'll do question mark a t t r slash action bar size. And then we're going to do the, we're going to set the background. Okay. And the background is directly going to correlate with the color primary that we gave inside of the theme. Okay. So remember this right here. So color primary. So whatever color you give it there, we're referencing that color right here. All right. And then finally you can set a theme directly on the toolbar. Okay. And what we can do here is we can do something cool. We can just use a theme and make it a dark action bar with a dark pop-up theme as well. And this gives it that. So the dark action bar, will make it a dark color, which we're actually gonna specify the color ourselves, but it's gonna make it a light text. And then finally, the we'll do app pop-up theme. And I'll show you what that app means here in a second. And we're actually gonna have to import that namespace as well. We'll do at style theme overlay app compact and this the pop-up theme is what happens when you click on the overflow and the overflow is like those three vertical buttons when icons are can't fit or you don't want them to, be, to show up on the action bar that little pop-up window that's what this is okay so we'll do close that off no longer need that and app is what we need to be using because we are using the support library and that's going to be a namespace that we're going to specify right here in the root widget. All right. And we'll do app and you can name it whatever you want. You can do my app or my, my drawer app or whatever you want. So just make sure you, you stay with that name. I'm just going to name an app Do dot Android dot com slash APK and auto. That will work. And now with the app, you are done with the toolbar and then now comes the drawer layout. Okay. And the drawer layout, if you've implemented one before, doesn't really change much. It's going to actually be the parent of the drawers and also the main content. So we'll do drawer layout. And this one only needs a few attributes like ID. We're going to need to reference this in code as well. So let's give it an ID, call it drawer underscore layout. 
and also a width is going to be match parent and then also a height which is going to be match parent and that is it for the drawer layout okay so it's just going to hold uh, a bunch of stuff so the main content is going to be the one what you need to specify first because the order matters because the order is deciding the z indexing okay and that's why when you when you pull out the drawer it overlays the main content and that's because it has a higher index value and it has a higher index index value because you it, it's it's in the order that you you initialize them so the main content you want to be on the bottom and then anything after that you want to be on um, on top of it okay so which is the drawer so the main content view needs to be specified first and we're gonna put it in a relative layout let's go ahead and copy and paste these two things since they're pretty common we're gonna we'll use them a lot and you want that to be match parent match parent and that's gonna be it for that maybe another one I'm gonna delete that and then inside of here is just gonna be a text view so the text view that you guys saw in the beginning of the video that's all it's really gonna be is just a text view that says something obviously you can do something like making a frame layout and putting fragments in it or making it obviously a little more intuitive than it is right here but uh, we're not really concentrating on the main content too much just the drawers so we're just going to put a text view inside of here and we could do text we'll just do a hard hard code action bar drawer toggle and then lastly because we are in a relative layout we can do layout underscore center and parent true so that will center perfectly inside of the parent both vertically and horizontally all right so that's going to be our main view and then now what we need is we need the left drawer so let's go ahead and comment that we'll do left the left navigation drawer and like i said before this can be really any view you want but commonly it is actually the list view so because a lot of people like to put lists in it, it's really handy to have a list inside of it. But you can really put any sort of view inside of it and just go crazy with it if you want. So the uh, the ID is going to be left door because we're going to need to reference it in code. And then we'll do width. And the width is going to be 240 dp. So Android asks us to stay around that value since they don't want you to make it too big or too small. When it pulls out, they don't want it to cover the main content. or They, they want it to basically cover about two-thirds of the screen. So 230 is a good value. The height should be match parent. And then because it's a list view, we're going to give it some we're going to give it some other values, okay? But this one's important. We want to make it we want to make layout gravity start. And that basically says, "Hey, we want it to be a left drawer." So that's where it's positioned at inside of the screen. And then we're actually going to specify this choice mode. This is for this is a, applicable to the list view single choice and then we're going to have the divider so this is actually the divider color so the divider is between the items and we're going to do something like a darker color like 81 81 something like that that'll give us something like a grayish and then we'll do we can specify divider height This is actually going to like the thickness of the divider. A little typo there. And we're also going to want to specify the background of it, which is going to be E3, F2, FD. But you can make it whatever, whatever value you want, of course. And let me fix that typo as well. And I'm going to close off this list view. So that is going to be our left navigation drawer, guys. And pretty simple. Uh, we're going to fill it with a simple adapter like I did a lot in the, in the, in the previous uh, video when I made the drawer layout. So but pretty much just gets the point across of what you can do with the left navigation drawer. So let's go ahead and rebuild this because we've done a lot of stuff with it. And let's, let's uh, ensure that we haven't made any mistakes. If we have, we'll fix them now and then we'll move on to the next point. So, But this will actually sum up the the main file that we have this is our designer file so that's pretty much all that we're going to do with that 
And then now we can come and dive inside of the code and we can actually grab a reference to the support bar, the, uh, the support toolbar, and then we can set it as the action bar. So notice like when you do this, when you do, you can do widget or when you do, probably can do like toolbar. And then this toolbar is not, is actually coming from Android widget. So if I were to do set support toolbar and added B, then that wouldn't be good because it wants the support toolbar, yet this toolbar is is the actual toolbar you use for API 21 and up. So for Lollipop and up, but we don't want that. So it's really easy to actually get them confused, not even get them confused, but just to actually use one when you're trying to use the other. So what I like to do is actually create an alias like support, I'll call it support toolbar, and that will equal Android support seven widget toolbar. So whenever I say support toolbar, I actually mean this. And that way I can never, I never, it's really hard to actually get them, get them uh, mixed up. So I'll do support toolbar and then we'll call it M toolbar. And then down here, I will do a good old find view by ID, cast it to a support toolbar. And then remember we named it toolbar. And then now that we have a reference to it, what we can do is we can set the toolbar to the action bar, but I can't do that yet. And that's because I haven't yet inherited from the activity, the action bar activity, okay? So activity is something that um, is being used less and less often and action bar activity is something that's being used more and more often because this is what it actually adds support for the new toolbar in the support library. So when you uh, type that in and you can actually add that in with the support library, and now I can call something called set support action bar and notice that it takes a support toolbar, which is what we have. So that's perfect. And there it is. Okay. So now that when I, if, if I were to go ahead and run this right now, we should have something that looks pretty basic, nothing really, nothing really spectacular. And that's because all we've done really is set a theme and the drawer and then set the toolbar to the action bar. So we should have a drawer, but we're not gonna get that cool animation, that cool arrow animation that we're expecting. And that's what we're gonna do after this build once we make sure that everything is working the way that we expect it to. And what we're gonna do, need to do after that is, is create the, the action bar drawer toggle. So we have our drawer layout and we now can see that we can pull out the drawer manually, but over here, we're not really getting any kind of indicator. And this is saying the app name, it's not saying open close like we wanted to. So there's still some things that we obviously need to do. However, we do have our drawer working and the next thing we need to do is add the indicator, okay? So the indicator is what makes it really cool and kind of adds that really cool effect and then you'll be able to have it listening in on that. So that's gonna be actually in the next video. Um, so stay, stay tuned, in the next video we're gonna actually take the take our existing project and then add the indicator, which actually isn't too bad. We've already done a lot of the work and then we'll be able to allow the users to click in on this and give them a cool little effect when it does pull out. All right, thanks for watching guys. Hey everybody, what's up again? Thanks for watching my video and be sure to check out the next video which is going to show you the second half of implementing the left drawer layout which is putting the indicator up at the top left. Alright, see ya.